seven days to pass the AWS Developer Associate. Now I know that sounds ridiculous. Most people spend two to three months preparing for this exam. They watch a 40 hour course, they take a mock exam, they fail it, they watch more videos and keep repeating until they eventually scrape a pass. Or worse, they keep pushing back their exam date because they never quite feel ready. But here is the thing, the exam is actually predictable. The same services show up over and over again. The same patterns repeat. And if you know exactly what to focus on, seven days is more than enough. The problem is most people are using the old playbook, jumping between YouTube videos, scattered notes, buying practice exams from three different places with no real system to tell them what actually matters. That approach will take you months, but there is a better way. Hi, I'm Suleiman. I've worked in tech for more than a decade and I run my own AI cloud security consultancy. Through my academy, I've helped over 700 IT professionals and engineers switch to the cloud. In this video, I'm going to break down exactly what the AWS Developer Associate certification actually tests which services show up over and over again, and the exact seven day system that you can use to pass on your first attempt. And stick around for the framework because day one is where most people go wrong. And it's the reason that they end up studying for months instead of days. So before you study anything, you need to understand what this exam is actually asking you. And where people mess up here is that they treat every topic equally. They watch a course from beginning to end, and then they end up spending hours on things that barely show up on the exam while completely ignoring the areas that actually matter. So there are four domains and each one has specific weighting. The higher the number, the more you'll be expected to know it. Domain one is development with AWS services, and that's 32% of the exam. This is the biggest chunk, and it's testing whether you can actually write code that interacts with AWS. Do you know how applications are built using Lambda? Do you understand how databases like DynamoDB work? Domain two is security at 26% of the exam. And this one catches a lot of people off guard. Over a quarter of the exam is security. IAM policies, encryption of KMS, managing secrets, authentication of a cognito. I see so many people skip this because it seems dry and boring. And then they're shocked when they're throwing away a quarter of their score. Domain three is deployment at 24% of the exam. And this is all about CICD. Do you understand how applications are deployed using code pipeline, code build, and code deploy? Do you know the difference between deployment strategies like blue green and canary deployments? And then you've got domain four, troubleshooting and optimization at 18% of the exam. It's the smallest domain, but still significant. This is about debugging, using CloudWatch for logs and metrics and understanding common error patterns. Now, AWS also explicitly says there are things that are out of the scope for this exam. So if you've studied or passed another AWS certification, you might already be familiar with some of these. These include designing architectures, managing servers and operating systems, and designing VPCs. Those are more solutions architect territory. And since we only have seven days, we have to make sure that every hour we spend is as efficient as possible. So we're not going to waste time on anything that won't show up. So now that you understand what the exam is testing, the next question is, which services should you be actually focused on? because this is where most people waste a lot of time. So if you look at the official exam guide, there's about 50 AWS services listed as in scope, and that's overwhelming. But here is the thing, you don't need to know all 50 services to pass this exam, not even close. So we're going to split these services into tiers so you can prioritize your time and get the most bang for your buck. Tier one are the services that you need to know like the back of your hand. And those are AWS Lambda, API Gateway, DynamoDB, S3, SQS and SNS, and IAM. These show up constantly. And if you're weak on any of them, then you're going to struggle. Don't worry though, I will go over the specifics that you need to know for each service when I reveal this seven day system. Tier two are the services that you need to understand conceptually, but not deeply. Things like Cognito for authentication, KMS for encryption, Secrets Manager and Parameter Store for credentials, X-Ray for tracing, CloudWatch for logging, and the Code Pipeline family for CICD. CloudFormation and SAM for infrastructure code, EventBridge for event-driven patterns, Step Functions for workflows, and Elastic Cache for caching. You'll see questions on all of these, but they don't require the same depth as tier one. Now, there are also a group of services that sit somewhere between tier one and tier three, Elastic Beanstalk and ECS. These might show up more than you expect. You don't need deep expertise though, but you should understand what problems that they solve when you would use them and also the basics of how they handle deployments. And then there's tier three. This is true awareness level. Things like Kinesis, AppSync, Amplify. You might see one or two questions on these, so don't spend hours on them. Now, the point is, don't get lost trying to learn 50 services equally. Focus your energy on what actually 
actually shows up consistently and then you'll start to notice the patterns yourself as you work through the mock exams. So now you know what the exam test and which services should you prioritize. Here is how to actually pass in seven days. And this is where everything changes because the very first step is the one that most people completely skip. Now, most people start their exam prep by pressing play on a course and watching from the beginning. And honestly, that's one of the worst things that you can do. You'll end up spending hours on topics that you might already understand while completely ignoring the gaps that are actually going to cost you on exam day. Now, it feels productive, but it's not. And that's exactly why people end up studying for months. So here is what to do instead. Day one is your diagnostics and gap analysis. This is the most important day and almost everyone skips it because it feels uncomfortable. But if you only do this one step properly, you'll dramatically increase your chances of passing the exam in seven days. So here is what you do. You take a full 65 question mock exam before you study anything. Don't watch a single video first, just take the exam cold. Now, you're obviously going to score quite low, especially if you don't have much experience. And that's completely fine. That is expected. You're not trying to pass here. You're trying to create a map of your knowledge gaps. And after exam, you'll go through every single question that you got wrong. And I don't just mean read the explanation and move on. You need to actually categorize each wrong answer. Which domain was it? Which service was it testing? What concepts did you miss? This single step will save you 10 to 20 hours of wasted studying on topics you already understand. Now, most people skip this because they're afraid of seeing a low number. They'd rather just press play on a video and feel productive. But that's exactly how you end up spending three months making no real progress on an exam that you could pass in a week. Days two and three are your core services deep dive. Based on your diagnostic, you now know exactly where you're weak. So these two days are about filling those gaps and you're focusing specifically on tier one and tier two services. On day two, you're going deep on Lambda and API Gateway. These services work together constantly and they're the backbone of serverless development on AWS. So you want to understand how Lambda functions get triggered, how they scale, how they handle errors, what's their runtime, and the different ways that you can deploy them. For API Gateway, focus on the different API types, how to control traffic, and the authorization options. At the end of day two, don't just move on, do 20 to 30 practice questions specifically targeting Lambda and API Gateway. So you wanna validate that you actually learned what you studied, not just assume that you did. On day three, you're focusing on S3 and DynamoDB and messaging services. For DynamoDB, focus on how data is organized and retrieved and the different capacity options. For S3, focus on storage options, security, and how it integrates with other services. And for SQS and SNS, understand the different queue types and when you'd use messaging to decouple an architecture. Again, end the day with targeted practice questions. But this time, you also want to include 10 questions on topics that you studied yesterday. Lambda and API Gateway, just to keep them fresh. Day four is security. And this is where I see a lot of people start to slip. They think security is boring. So what do they do? They rush through it. And then they're surprised when a quarter of their exam is stuff that they barely looked at. Remember, security is 26% of this exam. You can't afford to skim it. The big areas here are IAM policies and how permissions actually work. Cognito and the difference between user pools and identity pools, encryption with KMS, and when to use Secrets Manager versus Parameter Store. End day four with targeted security practice questions, again, 20 to 30, but also go back and test yourself on the topics from the last few days just to keep everything fresh. Day five is deployment. This domain is 24% of the exam, and it's where a lot of developers actually struggle because they've never set up CICD pipelines themselves. Now, you need to understand the code pipeline family, code commit, code build, co-deploy and how they work together. Know the key configuration files and what they do. Understand the different deployment strategies like rolling, blue-green, and canary, and when you'd use each one. For infrastructure's code, you need to understand CloudFormation basics and SAM for serverless applications. End day five with deployment practice questions, along with questions from the days before like we've been doing. Day six is troubleshooting plus what I call your mock exam gauntlet. In the morning, you're covering the troubleshooting domain. This is the smallest domain at 18%, but you still need to understand it. The main services here are X-Ray for tracing requests through your application and CloudWatch for logs, metrics, and alarms. Then in the afternoon and the evening, you're taking as many full mock exams as you can back to back. After each exam, review every wrong answer and don't just read the explanation. Really understand why the right answer is right and why your answer was wrong. Look for patterns. Are you still missing Lambda questions? Are you still confused about Cognito? Still weak on deployment strategies? This tells you exactly what to review on day seven. Day seven is targeted review plus the exam. This is not a day for new content. 
in the morning, do a light review of the topics that kept appearing in your wrong answers from day six. Do a quick flashcard run through on tier one services. You're reinforcing here and you're not cramming. Then take the exam. And if you follow this system, you'll pass it first time. That's exactly how I was able to get my AWS certifications. Now, here is the thing. The framework that I just gave you works, but it's not as efficient as it could be. And let me explain what that means. You see, when I studied for my AWS certifications, I found myself wasting so much time going over topics that I already knew. I had to watch courses on YouTube, then take notes on Notion. I would then jump on another platform to make flashcards, but that's not enough because you have to buy mock exams to make sure you're exam ready. And even then you still don't really know if you're fully ready. You're still just guessing. So I was constantly switching between three, four, five, even six different tools to get certified. And despite this, my learning wasn't even personalized to me. If I already knew how EC2 and S3 worked, I kept seeing those questions in my mock exams and even the learning materials, which is why over the last two years, me and my engineering team have been deep in the trenches is building a brand new certification platform for AWS certifications, StudyTech AI. You get certified in weeks and not months. StudyTech AI is the only platform in the world that identifies what you already know and focuses your time exclusively on your knowledge gaps. It's the exact system that allowed me to get my AWS Solutions Architect Professional Certification in just three weeks. You can take notes, spin up flashcards in just one click, get unlimited mock exams without having to pay for each one individually, and take advantage of AI-powered learning so you only focus on your weak areas. We've also added a daily learning loop, which means all you have to do is log in and our platform will set out exactly what you need to learn, which topics for that exact day in order to pass your exam. So there's literally no more second guessing. You just show up, you learn and you get certified. And just take a look at all of my students that are getting AWS certifications right now. You also get access to our community where I host weekly calls about certifications and cloud engineering in general as well. So if you wanna get AWS certified without wasting months of your time, there's a link in the description with a special discount available right now. All right. So you've got the framework. Now let's talk about what to do when you're actually sitting the exam, because even a small mistake here can cost you points that you should have had. Here's a few quick tips for the actual exam day. First, time management. You have 130 minutes for 65 questions, which works out to two minutes per question. If you're stuck on something from one and two to three minutes, then just flag it and move on. You can always come back. For question strategy, there are scenario-based questions, so read the scenario carefully. They often bury the key constraints somewhere in the middle, cost, latency, operational overhead. And that constraint usually points to the answer. Eliminate obviously the wrong answers first. Usually one or two options per question are clearly wrong if you know the basics. And look for AWS preferred patterns. When they say most scalable, they usually want serverless with Lambda and DynamoDB. When they say operational overhead, they want managed services like ECS. When they say most secure, they want least privilege and encryption. And when they say decouple, they want SQS or SNS or EventBridge. And then there's the mental game. You'll see questions on services or concepts that you've barely studied. That's normal. There are 15 unscored questions on the exam that ABS uses for research. And you might be looking at one of those. So don't panic on your questions if you're not 100% sure. Make an educated guess and move on. Trust in your preparation. Now look, the developer associate is definitely a valuable certification, but I need to be real with you. Getting this certification alone isn't going to land you a cloud role. Yes, it can form a small part of your application, but you obviously need more strings to your bow. Otherwise, everyone with a certification will be getting hired right now. I see this all the time before someone joins my mentorship program. They've got a few certifications, but they've quickly realized that employers won't give them a look in. They're burnt out at work. They're worried about the job market with all of these layoffs going on, and they want to be proactive before the layoffs hit them. Or they've already been laid off and they want to re-enter the market, but they've realized their skill set isn't up to date to compete with today's demands. So if that's you, and you're actually looking to land a role because let's be real, the tools and the services that I've talked about today are just a means to an end. What matters is what this career path can actually unlock for your life. More opportunities, the ability to make more money, provide for your family. That's what we're all doing this for. So if you're trying to actually land a role and you need my help, then just book a call with my team and let's see if we can actually help you break into the cloud or level up your career. As always, I'm rooting for you. Good luck.